Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when, as a Christian family, we celebrate the birth of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, we greet one another with the words of joy. Christ is born, let us glorify him. This is our expression of faith and of our commitment to give glory and honor to the one who came into this world to save us, to restore humankind's relationship with its creator. But we are called to do this in two ways, as individuals and as members of a family. For Christ comes to us not merely as one person, but always as a member of the Trinity and always as a member of the Holy Family. Family, therefore, is extremely important. Mary encountered him as her son as well as the Son of God. Saint Joseph encountered him as his earthly father and the Lord of salvation. Therefore, we are invited to encounter Christ as our brother, since his mother is our mother, his father is our father. Yet at the same time, we are invited to encounter Christ as our Lord and God and Savior. It makes sense then to contemplate the mystery of these relationships by looking at our relationships in our families. All of us have childhood memories, some pleasant, some we would like to forget, and some we will probably just cherish forever. Christ was present in each of them. Each of us grew up in relationships we would call family. And together, families have things in common, but each experience of every person is unique. Like Christ in the Holy Family, day after day, you learned to accept love as well as love others. And it may not have been perfect, but it is some reflection of the love that God, as Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, shares with us. And it is in the family that we learn to forgive, since no one of us is perfect. It is in the family that we learn to develop many of the gifts of the Spirit, just as Christ grew up in the love of Mary and Joseph. The encounter of Jesus Christ is unique for the Mother of God. When she conceives him, gives birth to him, cares for his needs, and raises him to adulthood with her loving spouse, St. Joseph. So then, how have you encountered Christ in your family? Obviously, and perhaps not so obviously, we have encountered him in our parents and our brothers and our sisters and other extended members of the family we each grew up in. Christmas is a good time then to reflect on how each of us encountered Christ day after day and perhaps didn't even really realize it. This encounter with Christ for Mary continually changed her heart. She learned to pass on the love of God to others as it transformed her. Joseph learned to love because he was loved by the Son of God and by his son Jesus. How have you been transformed then because of the love of your parents, your brothers and sisters? How are you called to reflect on the many memories of your growing up so that you can become more like Christ to others? How is that transformation taking place even now, given all the obstacles we have in the world? Each personal relationship we have has the dignity of an encounter with Christ. We don't have to settle merely for an historical fact that took place centuries ago and think we celebrated Christmas. The Gospel is a living word. It happens today if we spend time with Scripture and see it in the midst of our daily lives. The new evangelization is about an encounter with Christ today. And from that encounter, we are transformed and energized to share this encounter with others. In the Gospel of Luke we read, When the angels had left them and gone into the heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go now to Bethlehem and, and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. These men found their way to the infant, and through the eyes of faith, they were able to recognize the Savior, the Messiah, as the angel had told them. Without faith, they would have simply seen a newborn baby and his parents in a stable, surrounded by barnyard animals. Nothing new or wondrous, just another poor child born into the world. We have recently celebrated as Ukrainians the closing year of faith along with all the Catholic Church. 
And for us in our Ukrainian family, the year 2013 has another significance. It is the 1025th anniversary of the baptism of Ukraine Rus. The children of the baptism of Kiev and Rus, we can once again reflect on the legacy of St. Volodymyr the Great, who led his nation into the baptismal waters of the Mitre de Pro River, accepting in faith the same good news that the shepherds of Bethlehem heard proclaimed. This past year, while visiting many of our parishes in Canada, his beatitude, our patriarch, Sviatoslav, invited the faithful of Canada to journey to Kyiv in a worldwide pilgrimage to commemorate the baptism of Kiev Rus at the newly constructed Sobor of the Holy Resurrection on the river of the Duro. Like the shepherds of old, we are invited then to see for ourselves the wonder and the joy, together to celebrate our baptismal spiritual heritage with our patriarch, our bishops, clergy, religious, the lay faithful from around the world. And for those of our faithful who were not able to make this pilgrimage, we encourage you to find ways of celebrating this anniversary in your own parishes, in your communities. Let us celebrate this anniversary with a spirit of more than looking back into history. Let us examine closely our Christian heritage, what we as Eastern Christians and Eastern Catholics believe. Let us go forward into 2014 with our hearts and minds open wide to this living patrimony of faith that has been given to each of us. Perhaps you were not able to celebrate it in the memorable way you had hoped to celebrate that anniversary. Perhaps you feel you maybe are a bit outside looking in. The deepest desire of the human heart, however, is to do God's will, and each member of your family has the Holy Spirit, calling through them to encounter Christ, be transformed, and to share the good news with someone else who is a member of a family as well. Families are called to evangelize families. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, we read, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. This motto also stems from Pope John Paul II's encyclical letter, Familiarius Consultio, and the importance of the family unit in today's society. Witnessing to God, the Father, is not a solitary task. Christ demonstrated this through the mystery of the Holy Family. And likewise, the words from the prophet Joel reach us today, reminding us of God's promise. Afterward, I will pour out my Spirit upon all mankind. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Even upon the servants and the handmaids, in those days, I will pour out my Spirit. May our newborn Savior, Jesus Christ, bless you as you open your hearts wide to receive Him. And throughout the new year, may you receive God's many blessings with a spirit of thanks and praise. And as we share the good news with one another, Christ is born, let us glorify Him. Let those words heard by the shepherds of Bethlehem be our prayer of praise to God for His many gifts and wonders. Glory to God in the highest, heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The blessing of the Lord be with all of you. Christ is born. Christos is died, yeah.